Welcome back to the uh, mold design training series presented by Fortify. Um, we're gonna get into module two here. So this is gonna be setting up a template. This step is very specific to Creo and the workflow that I'm gonna be doing, but this workflow can be applied to any other CAD software out there. So at some point we'll be releasing the C module, but for different CAD softwares, but for the time being, this is very Creo specific. So with that, I'm gonna jump straight to Creo. Okay. So setting up a template, this is going to be all about just putting in some processes so that your mold design workflow from mold to mold is super repeatable. And it's going to cut down a ton of the design time that you might spend adding similar features to different molds, just like have it runners, block sizes, things like that. So we're going to start out with our overall mold frame. Now it's important to get the CAD for this mold frame so that you're able to do this master modeling and implement this as part of your workflow. For our frame here, we have three different pocket orientations, our smallest pocket orientation, our standard size, we have our medium size pocket, and then the full size pocket if we remove our runner bar and all that good stuff. This template is specifically, specifically gonna be for this smallest pocket size here. So we'll jump over to our master model. So this is gonna be just a standard part file. You're gonna start out for your master. So the first thing I like to do is identify one of my plans as a parting line plane. It does not matter which plane that is, but for the for this purposes, I renamed my front plane to my parting line plane. So we'll get a normal view of that to start. First thing I did here is identify my runner start location. So if we take a look at our frame here, close out of that for a moment. We have our runner position and it's not centered on this mold block. So it's very important that we hold the location of this runner and build everything off of that location because we wanna make sure we maintain good alignment between our sprue bushing and our actual runner section for the mold. From here, I identify the rear planes of my mold blocks. So I have my A half rear and my B half rear. So those are just gonna set the thickness of your mold blocks and it's a little more robust than doing that with a sketch, but essentially we've just identified what the thickness of our mold stack is gonna be. So we'll take a front view again. The next thing I did here is I did three separate sketches for my mold pocket. So I started off with a base, base sketch for the standard size. And then I have two alternate sizes that I can design to. So if we come back to our, our mold frame CAD here, we have our base mold block, same deal as what's in our master. If we swap out this insert, that allows us to design to a few slightly different pocket sizes. So that's why I included in these three separate sketches here, but these are essentially gonna identify what are the X, Y dimensions of our mold block are gonna be. And I threw in a couple extra planes to help me identify some certain stuff, but from there, I threw in a mold center. So this is a really nice feature to have in your mold master. So this mold center is gonna allow you to identify the absolute center of your mold block. And that's really good for placing a part where most of the time you're gonna to wanna to have your part as close to the center of the mold block as possible. So it's good to identify that. From there, we're gonna identify our mount holes and our actual counter bores. So if we come back to this mold block here, we hide that for a moment. We have four bolt locations that are essentially gonna allow us to mount the mold block to the frame. So it's important to, it's important to identify where those are and create those features because this is something that's gonna be present on every single mold design we do. We're always gonna have mounting holes. So it's important to outline those on this master and include them for both the A and the B half. So you'll see here, that I have both my B half and my E half mounting holes. The next thing we're gonna do is alignment holes. So these, these features are very good if you're gonna be doing some sort of secondary machining operation before you actually put your mold blocks into the frame. So what these alignment holes allow you to do is really just maintain alignment between your mold blocks when they're off the press. So whether that's secondary operations or whatever, anytime they're not mounted to your frame, 
these alignment pins are really going to drive the alignment of the mold blocks and they're going to be present on both the A and the B half. So if we look here, actually, let me hide that. we have these little cutouts. These are going to end up being the mounting or the alignment holes. And if we go ahead and hide that, these features here are going to be our alignment pins. So we implemented a pin and slot design here, which is going to allow us to really align off of this pin on the left and then maintain alignment from a rotational standpoint with this pin on the right here. Okay. Next thing we identified is our sprue bushing. So this geometry, it's a little different. It's not a straight cylinder. It's got this kind of tapered cut. So this is something you'll see this kind of geometry on a lot of metal molds, but it's not as pre prevalent on printed molds just because you're able to get a better runner geometry on your actual mold blocks with a full round runner with without having to do machining operations and two mold blocks. So essentially we're just identifying this feature so that we can smoothly merge from this kind of geometry into a full round runner. We come back here, you can see that you have this kind of tapered cut going on in your sprue bushing. And we're not gonna end up with that, but it's good to be able to start with that. So you're capturing that full runner and turning that into your full round later on. So from there, we'll just identify our runner start and we'll get our bushing merge there. So you can see that we have this full full round runner that's gonna be merged with this, this bushing feature, but pretty quickly it's gonna just turn into a fully round runner. And it's also present on the E half, which that's something you're not gonna see a lot with metal molds is runners on both, both halves of the mold. So we'll just do a little merging of that little blending. Now we'll design in a runner path here. So I like to just have a bait, a generic little path that my runner is probably not gonna follow during the actual mold design process, but I like to have this in here so I don't have to create a new feature. I'm just editing what I already have in there to merge that to my part. Next up, we'll include our ejector pin locations. So depending on what your setup might be, you might have pre-existing injector pin locations, or you might be doing injector plates every single time. Um, we like to go with a pre-existing injector plate. That just allows us to minimize any of those machining operations that you might need to do to get a mold ready. But it also gives us a repeatable spot where we can design to design our pins to. So we'll include these on our master itself. Now we're not going to use every single one of these tools on any given mold design. But what it's going to allow us to do is just pull the ones that we want at any given time. If we look in a little closer here, we actually have three different pole sizes. So these are all based on just standard ejector pin sizes with the largest hole being a 3 sixths, uh, 3 sixteenths uh, ejector pin. And that's going to be the largest ejector pin that we can use with this frame. And then we come down to a 1 16th with an, a 1 eighth ejector pin right in the middle. But these give us just three generic sizes to design off of so that we know that we're using repeatable ejector pins and we're not essentially having to order a lot of custom components when we're doing any of these molds. From here, I'm gonna add in a couple of printability features. So you notice that there's a little round on these cutouts here. So this round is just gonna break that sharp corner, which it helps out a little bit with the printing process. Here we got the same thing here. We have a chamfer at the base edge of this through hole again. This one's actually gonna help help a little bit with the mounting process where we're not gonna have the potential to have a sharp edge intersect with our screw when we're trying to put our screw and screw the mold block into the frame. So this is just make your life a little bit easier when you're actually mounting mold blocks. And then the last thing I have here, I have this sketch and coordinate system. So what this is gonna be is, this is actually where I'm gonna end up placing my part when I'm ready to start my mold design. And we'll get into that a, a lot in module three. But essentially this sketch is gonna be something that I'm moving around all over this mold block so that I can properly align my part. Might be aligning with an ejector pin like we have in this case or aligning with some other feature in here so that we can get ejection or just maintain a good wall thickness, whatever it might be. This is a sketch that we're gonna be editing a lot. Okay, so we've gone through our master model. Let's touch on quickly about how to actually turn this master model into a mold block. So open up our mold cavity. OK. 
Okay, so this is our mold cavity block. This is already, it's already gone through a lot of the CAD operations to get to where it's ready for a design. So we'll just quickly run through some stuff you're gonna to wanna to add in. So the first thing you wanna add in is your mold master. So essentially what we're doing here is it's kind of a funky uh, operation with Creo. It's this merge inheritance feature. So we're actually basically just copying in our master model as a part. But what this feature is going to allow to happen is anytime you make an update to your master model, it's going to trickle down into this mold cavity. So any feature, any change you make there, it's automatically going to reflect on your cavity block. So this feature is very nice for doing your master modeling. So to start out, we're going to extrude our cavity block. So if we take a closer look at this extrude, we're not actually extruding a certain distance. We're extruding right to our A rear face. So that's very important that we're not going to a distance because if for some reason we change our you know, mold pocket size, all we have to do is change that plane spacing initially and it'll update the extrusion here. So it'll properly, properly be reflected in our CAD. From there, we add a little chamfer around the base edge of the part. So this just helps us during that process, again, to break some of those sharp edges. And then we'll merge a few features together. So in this instance, we merged our alignment holes and we merged our mounting holes to the mold block. And then we're gonna go ahead and remove the alignment pins because they're not necessary for the cavity half. We'll go through, we added a bunch of rounds and chamfers again for that printability. This is stuff that you could add in every single mold, but I'd rather just add it into your template, your mold cavity or your mold core so that you do it once when you're setting it up. And then from there, you're all good to go. And you're saving a lot of time during that mold design process. And that's actually what these next four major operations are. So we're adding these cutouts to the base of this mold cavity here. These are features that they take a little bit of time to model in, but if you're printing your mold with this face on the build plate, these uh, chamfers are tremendous for actually removing the part from the build plate. And there's something that I wanna have in every single mold I'm designing. And it's a lot easier to do it once than it is to do it every single time. What do we got? This chamfer, and then we just add a little chamfer, broke those sharp corners again. Then lastly, we merged our runner section here. So at this point, We've, designed, we've laid out our mold master template. We've laid out our cavity block. When we go ahead to actually design a mold, all we really need to do is add in our part to this master model here, merge our part with our runner system, and then it will automatically update and actually generate this mold cavity block and core block or a good starting point for those molds. So we're cutting out you know, half an hour to an hour of design time right there just by doing this repeatable process up front. So that's what we have today for um, the setting up your template. Like I said, templates, super powerful for mold design. They're gonna help you automate that process without having to do anything outside of your expertise, which should be CAD. Um, we'll see you next time for uh, module three, actually cutting out our mold core and cavity.